Hey girl. <laughs> Hello beautiful people, welcome back to another life-changing, life-altering installment of Tea Time with Ayek. My name is Ayek, it is. It might not seem like that, but it really is my name. And um, I just want to welcome everyone back to the channel, welcome everyone to the channel. I'm just doing this quick intro before you see some clips. Um, the past, what, two or three months have been really challenging, but I would say challenging in a good way. You know that whole thing where you're like, listen, um, something's going to have to give. Um, some going to have to change. Some going to have to shake and with immediate effect. And that's exactly what happened from like November to today. <laughs> but I was able to pick up a project that I had been working on. I don't know if I told you guys about my podcast. Um, we picked up season two and a uh, second season, first episode of season two went up December 25th. Around that time, I also started a new gig, a new project. So there was just kind of a lot going on. You know, the whole passport, Wahala, everything just was going on. And that was kind of my excuse to go MIA on YouTube. Um, but I'm back, kind of. I'm tapping back in a little bit. I'm really trying to figure out how I want the content to be for YouTube because YouTube has changed so much. And I just want to make sure that I'm giving the girls what's going to benefit them and what's going to bless them and what's going to be good for them. And by the girls, I mean you guys and them, I mean you guys. So I say all this to say, check out the next clip of what I've been working on. If you want to see the full episode, um, please click the link in the bio and just tell me what I should do on the channel. Not tell me what I should do, but like, what would you want to see? I, I want to do a lot of fashion stuff on here, but I also want to do like more conversational because I feel like there's so much I've learned <laughs> over the past two, three months um, and so much forced growth that like I just really, really, really have to get it out in a way that's not like self-helpy. So I'm trying to figure all of that out. Thank you so much for sticking for me, sticking with me for the ride. And thank you for all the new people. You're more than welcome. I have so many playlists. If you're here because you're considering moving to Nigeria, I have a playlist for that. You want the fashion content? Girl, I got the playlist for that down there. The freestyle content, just be clicking. Click anything if you want different like freestyle content. And I will see you guys soon. Oh, and also I'm studying for exam. You already know me. You, you already know the person you're dealing with. You already know I'm taking another exam. So there's that too. But it's all good. We got this. We got this. Period. Period. See you guys soon. Bye. Oh, man. It's not easy. It. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to season two of the In Between podcast. I'm so excited to be here and be doing this after a very long hiatus. Guys, before I even say too much, we're taking it to the next level. We're going far in this life, oh, in Jesus' name. We're now on YouTube, so if you're watching on YouTube, welcome. If you're listening on Anchor or Spotify or Apple Music, is it Apple Music, sorry, Apple Podcast, you are more than welcome to the party. Let's get into it. I feel in this new season and moving forward, I do wanna focus more on personal vulnerability. And you know, the funny thing or the fun thing about trying something out for the first time is you get to learn lessons, right? You get to see your mistakes and you get to grow. I do honestly feel like I was too uptight. Even as I'm looking at the camera, you, if you're listening <laughs> on the podcast, you cannot see me, but I'm here like, hello, welcome to CNN. My name is Ekin Takam. It's giving that energy. Everything I was supposed to learn in the seven years of my 20s, I, I it was combined or compiled into like the, the last six weeks, the, honestly, like the past six weeks. And it was not giving at the time. But I'm actually glad that I experienced it at this point or experienced those lessons at this point because I feel like if it was any time before, even earlier this year, no, it would not, it would not have gone down well. And to be fair, it didn't. Like, I was crying at work. People thought I had allergies. I was crying tears. I was shedding hot tears. Hey, <laughs> but we'll get into that. <laughs> the two places I learned my lessons the most were in romance, like my love life and my finances. Everything I needed to learn about life, I learned primarily through my love life. And, and, and 
specifically the things that were still that still needed work. Let me not say we're wrong with me. That still seriously needed work. My self worth or my self value needed a lot of work. It never occurred to me until this year that I cannot stand to look at myself in the mirror. And I know you're thinking, oh, well, is it because of your size, because you're big? That had something, that kind of has something to do with it, but it was also just like, I felt disgust for myself. I felt not good enough. And not even not, even like lower than not good enough, like just not good, right? I felt unaccomplished because when I was in, when I was um, finishing undergrad, I said, oh, you know, by the time I'm in my mid-twenties, I'm gonna be doing this, this, and that. I felt like a failure. Why would I wanna be looking at a failure? Eternalize so many things that society had told me, lies that I believed, intrusive thoughts, and feelings of like abandonment or rejection or just not or just or just not feeling good enough. Feeling like I will do everything or or bend myself so many ways and still not feeling that love or appreciation from the person that I did it for. Um, and it was a lot. Despite all my seeming, from the outside, you know, people see me as highly accomplished and they also see me as highly confident, but no, I cannot look at myself in the mirror. How did I work around that? <sighs> I really do give God all the credit for it because um, I really don't know how else to explain it. I will read the Bible, I'll be hissing, I'll be like, uh, I beg you. They'll be saying fearfully and wondering if we made who's the person that's written. I beg, let me hear what you have. It's not me. But slowly but surely, hearing those affirmations, hearing the truth from the word of God, from the truth from the word of God changed everything. I'm like, wait, so hmm. Okay, girl. I like what I see. Okay, girl, you're more than just your your exterior, and and I think that that was another challenge. Um, we live in a very our cultures are very visual. It's about the way we look, and um, a lot of emphasis has been placed on my looks my entire life. Oh, you're such a pretty face. You have this. You have that. And then you know um, the com the the comments about needing to lose weight, and then getting older and being sexualized by men and not realizing that it's sexualization because I had no idea what that was. So it was very much exterior focused. That's why I couldn't see things like my accomplishments. I couldn't see things as um, any other part of myself but the outside. And I was seeing the outside, but I knew that my anger with myself or my disdain for myself was internal um, and how I just didn't rate myself. Yeah.